I kind of want to recap our flight from yesterday and wanted to see if y'all ever experienced this. Uh, and I know I've seen videos on social media about this, but I wanted to see if any of y'all have experienced something like this. And if you have, please comment below and tell me your story on what you experienced when you were traveling. So on our flight from Korea, Seoul, Korea to, um, actually, I'm, I apologize. Our flight from our flight from Seattle, Washington to Seoul, Korea, which is about a 10 and a half hour flight. Uh, the first thing that happened to me is we were uh, still climbing mid flight. Seatbelt uh, sign was actually kind of about to get coming off or, or going to be turned off. And I went to go put my seat back. And I put my seat back to relax. I was like, all right, let me just close my eyes and start relaxing a little bit. It's a 10 and a half hour flight. I was kind of just exhausted from, you know, just day to day monotony stuff. And there was an old Korean lady behind me and she started banging on my chair, like bang, 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 like crazy. And so I'm like, what the fuck? You know, I'm like, oh gosh, I have one of those people that you see on those videos where, you know, they don't like when you put your seat back because it impedes in their space. So I looked at her, I turned around and she goes, put your seat up, put your seat up. You know, like, I don't, I, I don't think she was saying it in English, but she was saying like, put the seat up. So I'm a courteous person. I mean, I'm not going to hear and disrespect or cause drama, right? Especially in the beginning of the flight. I don't want the air hostess to be like, yo, you know, this guy's mean or this guy's whatever like that. Cause we were flying Air Korea uh, or Korean airline. So I put my seat up and um, I was a little bit frustrated because then, you know, sitting up straight and trying to just relax is not the best position in the world to relax in. So what I ended up doing is uh, to kind of mitigate that is, you know, I kept checking back every like five or 10 minutes to see what she was doing. She was kind of getting ready to kind of go to sleep. And I slowly, like every five minutes, I would hit the button and slowly put my seat down, uh, you know, every once, you know, like about a half an inch or an inch. Uh, and I did that for about 20 minutes and I finally got my seat all the way back. But by the time I looked back, she was already passed out, so it didn't matter anymore. Now, they do have a policy, which I really do like, is that when you are eating food or you're getting served food, they do make you put your seat straight up so that, you know, the person that's eating behind you does have enough space. And I do kind of uh, like that. There are some people that are complaining in our chair, or I'm sorry, in our row saying, oh, I don't want to put my seat back. Why do I have to do that? It's, it's, I pay for the seat. I'm like, listen, it's just, you know, have some common decency and common courtesy. Because when you have that tray and you put the seat back, it's, it's you know, you're, you're eating the food at an angle. It's hard to get to some food in the back or something like that. Um, so that's what happened to me. And if you have had an experience like that where someone, you know, did not like you putting your seat back, please let me know the story. Comment below and tell me your, 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 what your story was. I would love to hear that. Uh, and then the second thing that happened to us on that flight, which is a first for me, but, you know, it's, it's something that you're, you're probably eventually going to run into is that probably about 15 rows ahead of us, there was an older or elderly gentleman that uh, he uh, apparently had a stroke and he started going into convulsions and, and started shaking and stuff like that. And, you know, we didn't see it and stuff like that. And eventually someone came, you know, to the front and then to the back, like not even an air host, someone who was sitting next to him and said, hey, is anybody a doctor? And immediately when you hear that that's that word those words uh, is anybody a doctor you're like oh crap something bad is happening or something you know worst case scenario is, is is about to happen and then about three minutes later on the uh, hostesses or air air hostess i'm not sure exactly what you call them uh plain people whatever like that came on the spiel and said hey is if there's anybody a doctor please we have a medical emergency so you know everyone started like you know looking down the hall, you know, because we were in the back of the plane. So, you know, people were looking this way for in the middle. And then we were looking ahead, like all kind of figuring out what's going on. And there's something happening. But the story, you know, keep the story short. The elder gentleman had a stroke. Uh, the doctors came. There's three female doctors and two backup male doctors actually making sure he's taken care of. They had to move some people around because he had to lie down. I think they eventually moved him to first class. So he has his own chair and, and capable of lying down. But and, and, and from what I've heard, in about 20 minutes, the guy was fine. He, he was like, all right, I'm good to go. No problem. He got up even and went to the bathroom, uh, you know, went back to his seat. You know, everything was fine. And then all of a sudden it happened again. And then after that one, I guess that was a more serious one where they had to administer a saline solution IV and they also had to administer oxygen. And he was pretty much like zocked out. I mean, not zocked out. He was knocked out. Like he was unconscious for majority of the trip. Now, lo and behold, you got to look at this, right? Like, you know, I know the planes have some medical equipment, but 
it, it, we were still about nine hours away from getting to Korea. So you can imagine that if something happens, Korea is nine hours away. If they had to divert the plane, we were in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. I mean, it was going to be pretty hectic. And we were hoping that the guy would be okay. We were, you know, praying for the best that he was going to be okay, um, you know, and not get diverted. But uh, it turned out at the end that, you know, he survived and he was fine. So if you've had an experience, something like that, please comment and let me know below what your experience was. I would love to hear that. So, but on our first day, um, so that's our, that's my plane story here. And that'll probably be during the first day. Um, now what we're going to do here today is we have a day off before the tour starts. We're actually going to be traveling on our own a little bit. So, you know, after my workout, we're going to go hit breakfast. I'm going to probably go get a haircut. So you'll probably see me, uh, videoing that to see how good the haircuts are here. See if they can, uh, fade me like my barber's fade me back at home and we'll, uh, we'll see you then.